Dear investor, in this edition, let us discuss one F524, the year that has ended, we believe on a good note. Quarter four result season. Look at reasons for market volatility. What is causing volatility in the present? Next would be a focus on another theme, capital market theme, which is presented in our portfolios and in the end, valuations and our positioning. FI24 has ended on a good note. Uh, we would end the year with a GDP of 3.6 trillion and an underlying growth of 7.6 real. Uh, capital markets have signed off 24 with a stellar uh, 29%, 60%, 70% returns in Nifty, Nifty mid cap and uh, Nifty small cap indices. Uh, so it's been a good year for the markets. Indian market cap has reached uh, US dollar 4.4 trillion, making it the fifth largest in the world. Uh, over the last 10 years, our GDP rank has changed from 10th to 5th. Uh, also, the current account deficit has reduced from 1.7% of GDP to 0.7% and our forex reserves have expanded. So overall, uh, good healthy uh, macros. India is currently experiencing a mini Goldilocks moment due to solid macroeconomic conditions, some parameters we shared, healthy corporate earnings, peaking of interest rates, moderate inflation print and ongoing positive policy momentum. We are thus less impacted by global events and uh, uncertainties on account of global events cause less impact domestically because of our one robust domestic growth and higher forex reserves both in absolute terms and as a percentage of gdp which uh, acts as a dam between the volatility outside and the indian economy coming down to the next topic uh, quarter four result season uh, key trends and expectations. Uh, this is just the beginning of the result season. Few days have passed. We are talking on 22nd of the month. You know, our institutional equity teams expect this, its coverage universe and nifty earnings to grow 6% YOY each in fourth quarter 24. Excluding global commodities, metals and oil and gas, the universe and nifty should post 12% and 9% earnings growth respectively for the quarter. This has been the trend. We have been pointing out that the broader universe earnings growth for several quarters now has been more than that of the nifty. Uh, till this trend continues, we believe uh, it continues to be time for alpha. It is uh, along with our belief uh, that uh, prices follow earnings growth. Overall earnings growth is likely to be driven once again by domestic cyclicals such as BFSI and auto. Private bank and NBFC lending would uh, mainly lead BFSI lending with 14 and 23 percent YOY growth respectively. Earnings growth of private and PSU banks at 14 percent and 12 percent while healthy is the lowest in 10 and 8 quarters. Uh, and it is actually converging with uh, that of the index itself. Uh, the auto sector earning growth is uh, continuing to be strong at about 20% uh, YOI. As yet, we have seen results from a few auto uh, broking and IT companies. Aggregate uh, volume numbers for jewelry, retail and housing spaces uh, have been shared and have shown strong quarter four trends. Trends in stock market volumes did point to a robust number from uh, broking companies and that has been the case. IT companies went into the quarter with muted expectations, but in some cases have still disappointed uh, versus expectation. And the guidance for the next period also points towards uncertainty continuing for longer. IT companies are large incremental employers and a slowdown here does not portend well for the urban consumption growth as well. Employee strength has seen a drop in the uh, top three IT companies which have uh, declared results. Auto company results have been uh, very good. Now, uh, coming down to the next topic, markets are at a high. Uh, let us see what causes volatility in the market. Uh, we are undergoing a period of small volatility. 
what are its causes and how are our portfolios positioned for the same. Now market large cap index hit a high on 10th April 24 of 22,775 at this juncture uh, you know let's also examine the short period outlook for the market. Uh, it is the nature of the market to be volatile and surprise the investor. Uh, positive volatility is liked while negative is uh, uh, causes concerns amongst long only investors. A 3 to 5 percent correction is common and can happen any time and indeed has happened multiple times over past one year uh, in a year which has been otherwise very very strong for equities. Uh, such periods were for example uh, September October of last year, January of 24, March of 24. Now uh, let's just list down the causes of volatility uh, you know they could take the shape of uh, one sharp changes in expectations for example uh, if interest rate cuts were expected uh, and they start to rise uh, corporate margin changes on commodity price change etc it could take the shape of changes in policy makers you know on 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 unforeseen election outcomes for example uh, changes in policy making environment e.g. for some, some reason uh, you know if the world again or let me say the world uh, stops moving away from uh, China and the China plus one theme is uh, less relevant uh, that can cause volatility. Uh, it can take the shape of for example end of year considerations which causes volatility in Feb, March and most years. Uh, geopolitics can impact, uh, you know, especially geopolitics that lead to spikes in oil prices in particular. Uh, there can be volatility on account of reform uncertainty and tax changes on domestic and offshore investors, uh, you know, volatility on account of earnings missing or exceeding expectations. Uh, volatility can come in on account of trading mar margin changes uh, and that happened some time back. Short period uh, rise in stock market in investments, you know, for example, on index weight changes, uh, you know, causes one leg of positive volatility and then once that happens, there is a normalization thereafter. And yes, if earnings, uh, if the valuations look very, very uh, uh, stiff, there can be correction on that count as well. Now, recent volatility in the market has been caused by uh, yield spike in the US, INR depreciation, and the spike in oil prices as a consequence of heightened geopolitical con concerns and some changes reported for Mauritius FPI taxation structure. Uh, we had shared in our past our tolerance level on oil in November 23 edition and believe that the economy should be able to sustain even at oil at $105 a barrel. Since then the current account deficit has actually improved and the forest reserves today are at an all time high. Uh, this is further improving our ability to withstand short term shocks. Moreover, since we did not decrease petrol product prices when oil was closer to $75 per barrel, the need to increase it now is, is not there, further keeping the economy insulated from inflationary pressures. In the event of the flare-up remaining contained, uh, you know, uh, not impacting the flow of oil and assuming trade channels remain open, which is our expectation. The dip in the market on this count should prove to be an opportunity. Uh, higher interest rate sustaining for longer is a headwind for growth style of investing. Uh, however, here Indian interest rates are close to average of last decade. It is the US interest rates which have spiked up. Now a spike up in US interest rates imply prospect of lower growth there and to mitigate that risk we have kept focus on domestic businesses by and large in the portfolios. Uh, it also implies lower and negative, lower or negative FPI inflows. Rupee depreciation uh, can cause some FPI selling in the short term. Uh, however, INR depreciation, so we are at a uh, high on uh, dollar to a rupee. 
higher INR depreciation to some extent is good for corporate margins in the medium term. Uh, spaces where FPIs are more present are banks and tech services and these spaces should continue to uh, see some more selling pressure, uh, you know, to mitigate the risk we are less present in these spaces. We have been less present there for now close to a year. Since our forex reserves are at an all time high, FPI selling should not prove to be an issue. Moreover, as we have been pointing out, Indian capital market story increasingly is about structural domestic flows coming to the market and is no longer FPI dependent. Election outcome related uncertainty is low at this juncture. Volatility can be expected around election result time if the outcome is significantly different versus expectations. Post elections, yes, at the time of the budget uh, of the new government, uh, you know, uh, uh, that would be a time when uh, people will focus on the budget and can cause some amount of volatility. Uh, our portfolios are built of businesses positioned in line with the general policy direction and benefits from growth tailwinds. Uh, moreover, heightened geopolitics may cause reduced market access to manufacturing entities in some locations and impact export-oriented businesses uh, in India. Uh, our portfolio is more domestic business focused and hence should be less impacted. We believe we are very well positioned in the alpha themes and believe that the market dips uh, offer uh, great entry points. Uh, coming down to the next topic, capital market themes. Over the uh, last two uh, editions, we have discussed premiumization and China plus one theme. In this edition, let us discuss the capital market theme. Uh, it is a space which is well represented in most of our portfolios. Key driver of the theme is the evolution of India from being a country of savers towards being a country of investors. Better income levels are leading to financial surpluses on which investors can take measured amount of risk in the quest of better uh, than bank returns. Uh, the growth runway is long. Uh, if you look at the total PAN cards issued in the country, the total number of DMAT accounts are less than one-fourth uh, of the number of PAN cards issued and the number of mutual fund subscribers are, uh, you know, less than one-third of the number of DMAT accounts themselves. This clearly indicates the long runway of growth in terms of market penetration itself. Higher activity from market participants would be the other driver. The ecosystem comprises of stock and commodity exchanges, mutual funds and alternate asset managers, brokers, back-end service providers, you know, for DMAT, etc., wealth advisors and distributors, amongst others. Indians have been under invested into equities and equities contribute to sub 4% of the household uh, assets. Strong market action over the past period has brought this number closer to 5%, but it is still very low versus other countries in the region itself. You know, as the, as the graphics show, the good news is that the journey of better capital market participation has started. Number of DMAT accounts have tripled over the past three years and yet the penetration levels are, uh, let's say, a third of China. Uh, market participation is seen in, uh, is better seen in richer states like Maharashtra, Gujarat and Delhi. Uh, once again pointing out that uh, level of per capita has a bearing here. Strong economic growth in poor states should rapidly increase participation from there. This implies sustained long period growth. Improved investor participation is leading to a surge in cash and FNO volumes in the exchanges, inflows into MFs and alternate funds, and into assets advised by wealth managers and distributors. Uh, this is leading to a strong, sustained improvement in revenues of the participants, you know, exchanges, mutual funds, wealth managers, distributors and brokers and service providers. Many of the entities such as the mutual funds, exchanges and brokers are very scalable. These are system-driven platforms and a large part of increase in revenue drops to the bottom line. This makes the space quite attractive for investments. Uh, of the other spaces, uh, businesses linked to increases in trading volumes are uh, experiencing better predictability. This is a slightly contrarian view. 
volumes are increasing as a consequence of higher ticket size you know one share is priced higher uh, over time with market rise uh, more participation of people higher frequency of participation and is aided uh, by the volatility in the market itself future and option volumes are sharply going up on leverage speculation and hedging considerations overall upward trending markets with some volatility are thought to be good for volumes monopoly businesses like exchanges are well positioned in the past uh, you know brokers the other 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 cohorts saw intense pricing pressure which seems to be subsiding the space has seen large consolidation this is increasing the attractiveness of this space going forward a uh, key risk uh, here is flat markets with low volatility which can cause volumes to fall uh, next in the food chain would be aum based businesses such as asset managers and distributors where growth is linked to market moves and fresh net inflows now uh, fresh net inflows have been strong take the shape of uh, both lump sums and uh, structurally uh, with sips and yes followed by the back end service providers overall we believe this theme should see earnings growth sustain higher than nifty index growth for multiple years uh, as a house we have positioned our clients monies into exchanges and brokers uh, moreover as we pointed out some of the larger entities are tech platforms they have aggregated a more affluent cohort of indian population on their platforms over a period of time cross sell opportunities in the financial space would arise and could take the shape of uh, uh, lend- sourcing lending and insurance uh, products for the manufacturers uh, already some brokers are attempting the same further increasing their uh, tams coming down to the next topic uh, expectations after the new government formation Uh, this is a hot topic in discussion election process is expected to be completed by june resulting in a formation of a new government given the widespread expectations of return of the policy makers the policy road map map should be expected to remain on the set path a uh, few expectations are as under uh, one increase in prices in few spaces in the run up to inflation uh, to the elections inflation and price rise gets higher focus and price increases are deferred wherever possible uh, post election normalization is expected to take place you know uh, two spaces where we do expect some price increase attempts uh by players are uh, telecom and uh, cement uh telecom sector is seeing renewed focus with successful fund raise of uh, idea vodafone uh and that uh, you know makes it clear that the market would remain a three player market post elections all players are expected to uh, raise prices some on profitability concern some you know uh Uh, on listing concerns and uh, giving giving private equity exit at a uh, good price uh, cement players are also expected to attempt price increase post elections as has been the trend in the past second thought is uh, you know in newer spaces under pli government has been ruling out pli benefits to catalyze investments into spaces where the country may be suffering from competitive disadvantage with mixed results electronics plis plis uh, is seen as a success and items like cell phone laptops tvs air conditioning etc are increasingly now made in the country for the success to continue even after the pli period is over it is necessary to have component ecosystem also in the country and there are expectations of more incentives for spaces like semiconductor components osats lithium ion batteries etc where more players may be included uh, defense indigenization should retain its focus given the geopolitical scenario and we expect more items to be put in the make in india list uh, focus on capex is very high uh, from the uh, bottom we have had 3 years of strong capex growth Uh, the next period uh, this should uh, con- continue uh, make in india the big push of the current government and while plis would help up 
help set up manufacturing infrastructure. Infrastructural capex would help logistics within the country and outside. Investments in rail, rail tracks, higher speed railways, better and new roads should continue. Uh, privatization is the other space where we expect to uh, see renewed focus. Uh, we have seen strong up move in government businesses uh, in the stock market. Some businesses such as BML, Concor, IDBI Bank were listed to be divested in the past. Post elections one can expect some of these to be done. Uh, similarly, coal block auctions to enable rapid scale up of coal production should be expected. Uh, overall, the policy roadmap set over the past few years should continue to be followed. Coming down to the uh, last topic on valuations. Given the sustained strong growth in the economy, good macro outlook and continuity of policy making, we continue to think valuation should sustain. Geopolitical events, if they sustain for longer and cause disruption in global trade and a spike in oil prices, could impact the picture uh, as could a sharp up move in equity taxation. Else with reverse globalization, corporate India should be able to positively surprise on the manufacturing side, both in terms of volume growth and margins. Large cap valuations are close to average valuations and earnings growth related compounding should continue to be expected from this space. Mid and small cap are key beneficiaries of the new policy direction and are experiencing better growth in earnings after a long time versus larger cap years. Uh, this has been happening from the bottom of COVID. If the growth delta sustains in favor of mid and small caps, this space can sustain higher than long period valuations. Overall, we do believe that buying on dips should continue to be a good strategy. Uh, think of it, a 5% dip happening over a quarter corrects close to 10% valuations on account of continuous compounding of underlying earnings stream. Amongst the themes which are present in our various portfolios, we expect defense to find new focus on account of geo geopolitical situation. Chemical sector has not performed over past one year and, and there is now hope that the 20 restocking cycle is now behind us which is improving the sentiment here. Themes like luxury consumption and capex should hold out during the election season quite well. And good monsoons expected on Al Nina should help. EMS space should benefit from new PLI rollouts once the new government formation has taken place. Renewable space is seeing strong corporate sector ordering, which is keeping the order books of the players buoyant. We are less present in the IT sectors where sector where the result has been weak. Overall, we believe we are well positioned in the focus spaces and expect our investee companies to deliver a significant delta in earnings over the broad market. Uh, it is this delta in earnings which should over time uh, result in uh, superior performance. Thank you. Happy investing. May the good times continue. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.